In the late days of the new federation, in 2805 U, the high desert observatories on Karakis where new federal navigation monitored the world's orbital environment, an old signal buoy, dormant since before Pasakalia, pinged to life. This was an unusual, though not unprecedented development, there were thousands of old signal buoys seated throughout Karakan local space, dumped in the world's Lagrange points, and in various long and short orbits around the planet. They had been placed millennia ago by the Apollo, powered by nuclear drives that, as far as the people of Karakis were concerned, were inexhaustible. The boys, old communications relays, data collection satellites, theater building autocartographers, breadcrumb nodes, and so on, had been tracked, but left alone unless they presented a danger to orbital traffic. The buoy that pinged was a communications relay, a simple signal booster that accepted a tight beam laser communication, sighted its next point, and passed it on, cleaning the signal and boosting it to prevent excessive data loss. In this case, it targeted the old towers that had been maintained on Karakis since the earliest days of habitation by a series of professionals, monastic orders, cults, and, at the time of contact, a skeleton crew of new Federation flight control operators working to mothball the structures. It took the crew the better part of a week to realize that the old buoy was pinging, it was a simple binary message, which they were able to translate into old earth languages following ancient guides, then into Karakan. The message contained plans for the construction of a compatible communications platform, but there was no need, the Karakans were able to tune an existing platform to the correct parameters and send their own greeting to Union. Attached in the Karakan reply was a broad portfolio of data including images, texts, music, and other cultural artifacts, the distances involved meant that any reply would take years to reach its intended recipient, so it was years later, after a measured rollout of the announcement, a range of public responses, and growing speculation around what, if anything, Cradle would say in response, that the Karakans received Cradle's reply. With this brief exchange of messages, Karakis entered a new era of interstellar politics, the major test for the new federation was to determine how to approach the senders of these transmissions, data scraped from the tight beams pointed back toward Earth, indicating that they were indeed sent from that world, one largely forgotten by the Karakans, but of greater and greater public interest as the origin point of these messages. Messages flowed back and forth, with cultural exchanges occurring once every 16 years. Soon, the messages began to return faster, their origin point was a union near lighter, en route to Karakis. First contact had a complex effect on the Karakan psyche, some, chief among them the hagiographs, die-hard careerists of the new federal army, urged the barons to launch a fleet and meet the incoming ship. Others cautioned temperance and advised the barons to approach not with military ships, but civilian vessels. In the end, they decided to review old protocols and grant the arriving near light vessel an honor guard, a mix of military ships and diplomatic yachts arranged in an escort corridor. Protocol queries flew back and forth between Karakis and the approaching ship, establishing diplomatic handshakes, sharing health data and vaccination information, language guides, and other contextualizations and introductory information. The Karakans learned a more detailed history of Union and the Central Committee, and, for the first time, were able to place themselves in a coherent timeline. Accordingly, Administrative and cultural reforms were announced across the new federation, part of the ongoing package of reforms already underway as part of the transition from Anorum to federation. When the ships finally met, it was a bridging of splintered histories thousands of years in the making, the Union delegation was escorted with a gleaming honor guard and landed with great fanfare in the capital. The new federation is remembered today for its peaceful welcome of Union's representatives, its insistence on reintegration under the Union standard timeline, and its inability to effectively address Union's political influence in the following centuries. While the relationship between Union and the new Federation was initially peaceful, this peace proved unsustainable. In the Federation, resistance to these reforms soon began to coalesce with the new Anorum movement around the surviving members of the Anorum Tyrannus, Tajits, and his children, who had become ceremonial cultural leaders, important figures whose favor was still sought even if they held no formal political power. Resistance took the form of reactionary fervor, 
spurred on by disillusioned hagiographs angered by the Federation's attacks on Karakan culture. Meanwhile, on Cradle, a growing anthro-chauvinist movement recoiled at the idea that Union's mantle might reasonably be threatened by this distant cousin, or others, at the far edges of space, and began to agitate for a more direct form of rule. For the space of a few centuries, there was an uneasy peace between the two stellar nations, communications and cultural exchange were solely restricted to data packet transfers on automated near-light ships, with early pattern, inorganic machine minds handling the rigors of any physical journey. The relationship between the Central Committee and the new Federation was top-heavy, at the grassroots, reactionary sentiment put pressure on both governments, slowly building into a powerful shearing force that would see both civilizations thrown into the first major interstellar war in human history. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.